This video will show you exactly what I'm doing with this website here. This is a six month view of traffic on Bonsai Mary, and you can see our traffic is going up, up and away. This is organic traffic. We received 700 some clicks. That's up from 60 clicks. So that's a 10X gain. How are we doing this? I'll show you exactly how we're doing it. This is the Ahrefs for it. So this is like an inside view. The DR is a 24. It's not a terribly powerful website by any means. And you can see the traffic from here is going up, up and away as well. This is interesting though. I want to click this button here, this one right here, organic pages. So we are throwing so many pages on this website, right? We're up to 800 some, and you can see it's creating a snowball effect. Now, if we go a little deeper, this is analytics, right? Over here, 27 users in the last 30 minutes. Okay, that's a good indication, but you can see we get way more than just 700 visitors a day on this now. We're up to 1,600, 1,700. How are we creating this website to have that like parabolic growth chart? And that's what we're gonna discuss right now. Now, so this is the website Bonsai Mary that we're talking about. If we go to the homepage, let's just start there. It kind of has a dynamic thing. It looks nice, cool. If we go to the general blog, it's just a regular blog role on the blog section. No problem there. We have nice pictures. We have an introduction. This is not crazy, you know, on page SEO. I mean, some of it is, and I'll get into that, but I want to show you this diagram. Have you ever seen this? Good, cheap, and fast, right? Well, with AI now, you know, we can do it good if we do certain things, and I'll show you, but we can also have it fast and cheap. It used to be to do what we're doing on this website, you would need a team of like five writers, and I would have to pay them a crazy amount of money, right? But now we're creating these articles here, all of this, all in for about a price of $4.00 an article. But if you look at this chart, you know, we flatlined when we recreated the website in April. And then around here in September, we started getting real traffic gain. And that's because we started doing things different. And the difference had to do with this top one here, good, right? They say you can't have good, cheap, and fast at the same time. It's impossible, that middle section. But if we come to the sitemap, all of this highlighted stuff, all of this is in the seven days time for this website. In other words, these are new articles to the website, right? Seven days. So I went to ChatGPT, I said, how many are there here? 92, call it 91. And if I click into any of these, any of these articles, it doesn't matter, I'll just do it at random. Just click into two of them, right? They all look pretty much the same. We follow the same format. We have Amazon affiliate links. We don't have any ads on this website, which is a very interesting thing to say. I'm gonna leave it at that. But um, this is a mega article that's extremely useful for anyone interested in that plant. Furthermore, uh, String of Pearls Care Guide, same thing. We are following a format to achieve good, cheap, and fast. And check this out. This is Google Discover Traffic for the same website. And we've had days last year where we're getting a lot, a lot of clicks, right? And it begs the question, how do we do this and keep our content creation the same, right? How do we get Google Discover traffic and just do what we do naturally? And that's what I'm exploring right now. This is Google's guidelines for Google Discover. See this right here, max image preview. You need to have it set to large, all right? You can pause the video, take a read here, but I'm gonna show you examples of what that means. So this here is an article, right? Bonsai Mary on African violet care tips. Great. This image right here, if we inspect it, is not, see the width here? It's a thousand, a thousand twenty-four rather, and oftentimes it should be. They say twelve hundred pixels wide, and it should, it should. And this image, technically, if I go here, image and new tab, that's bigger than twelve hundred pixels, but it's rendering at only ten twenty-four on the website. So what do we do? Well, you have to make sure your website is set up. What it was saying, the max, where is it? Max image preview large. That means that Google can grab this thing. It can grab the image and render it really big for Google Discover because Google Discover, how it does it, it's all images and it needs good images. Otherwise, it's not even gonna consider your website. So throughout the day, I'm checking different things. We'll come back to that one. This is Microsoft Clarity and I'm also checking Google Search Console all the time, Ahrefs as well. But this is Monster Insights, just a plugin, right? 2023 in review, we've had this many visitors, this many sessions. Google Discover really pumped up November. Um, a tip. A tip, review your top referral sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, top five countries, I'd like to see you know these because that's how we're gonna make money eventually. Um, we've spent the most time on these pages. So if I click here, right, page views the most on this one right here, a huge listicle, which is much different than our regular care guide. So I'm looking for outliers, right, outliers. 
Uh, most of the traffic is mobile, so you know, make sure your mobile renders fast and it renders well. It looks nice. Very important. You know, that's Google Discover type of stuff. Pinterest help, Facebook. We're exploring diversification with all these different platforms, having some luck and having some bad luck there, but we're pressing on. But when I come here, this is important. The last three days, right, we've had 4,600 sessions. Very nice. The highest this website has seen. And you can see down here, these are the different pages that receive traffic. And this one right here is a total outlier, right? 1,100 in the last three days, whereas everything else is like much less. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? It's most likely Google Discover. And what we can do, and I'm just, I'm teaching you how to kind of be the chef, right? Who, who kind of tests how the soup tastes. You got to taste the soup. And that's what I do every day. This one here has a lot of traffic with Google Discover. So we have to learn from it, you know? Just learn from what is working well. Maybe the format is doing well. Maybe the pictures really set it off. Are the titles in this? Let's look at the title. Spider plant care tips for a thriving indoors with photos. Okay, interesting. So we go through and you just have to taste the soup over and over again. See what's working and then iterate. Just keep doing that thing and turn the screw. Now this is something we've been doing different, right? You can see we have a custom image. I even take it to Photoshop and put a little stamp of Bonsai Mary. I want this page. There's certain pages on a website that should be considered money pages or more important than the rest. Everything should be good content, but there are more important pages. Why? Because indoor plants, that one right there with the slug up here being indoor plants, is targeting a keyword that could have 30,000 visitors a month just in itself, right? And how we do these ones, these are mega listicles, so 79 best indoor plants for beginners. Now, I want to say something here. I, I de-optimized this post just a little bit on purpose, and I added a suffix. So check this out. Indoor plants. I, I could have said best indoor plants. Down here, I do have best. The slug could say best dash indoor plants, but I chose not to. And I added a suffix for beginners. Why? Because I don't want to be stacked up against the big dogs like the spruce and say epic garden in for the best indoor plants and call it at that. I want the best indoor plants for beginners so I can kind of get my slice of the pie. Now I'm going to show you the extent of this blog post. 79, truly 79 different plants. I mean, I'm scrolling. I'm not even halfway through this thing. Now, why so big? Why is the post so big? Well, if you look at the competitors for indoor plants, if I come over here and I did indoor plants, right? Let's just do that. Indoor plants. Oh, I got to spell it right. You're going to see here 22 best indoor plants. You're going to see 24. You're going to see, I mean, there's a lot of purchase intent, right? So we could say best indoor plants. Let's see what comes up there. You know, there's going to be listicles here. 10, 24, Home Depot purchase intent, 23. Well, here we go. We have the best indoor plants for beginners. This is a, certainly a competition. If I come here and I do the headers, how many do they have? They have, you know, I mean, that's not, that's not too much. That's probably less than 20. Uh, oh, excuse me. Here they are. But even that, that's not a lot either. So what we're trying to do is just overwhelm Google with content that's great. And then when we have the listicles, it's just a crazy amount of good content. Now, have you seen this Verge article, right? Super cool. They take us through the evolution of blogging. Look at the UI here, like crazy. So they're saying Google's powerful. Uh, we wanted to start a website on like chameleons or something. And this is what we created. But at first we didn't have, you know, file names named and alt tags. It's a really good article. And it goes through the evolution of like how someone naturally actually make SEO, like quote unquote SEO, their website. And um, it makes sense. So they're saying, we saw websites with titles. What are those? Let's make titles here. Oh, people also ask type of stuff. And then they come to the realization or the conclusion like, okay, we're not ranking down here. What can we do? We go to an SEO tool. We need more keywords in the text, right? Everything we do on this channel type of stuff. And then eventually they're like, now our website looks the same as everyone else's. Very interesting. And at the bottom of the article, if I can scroll down, I like how they ended it. There's some things in here I didn't really care for, some of their language, but you know, you can't win them all. And look, oh, our rankings increased because we did SEO. All right. Very cool. I like it. I love the UI. They said it's all but certain that a new era of content relentlessly optimized for AI search engine is bound to result in the same kind of problems we have today. Which begs the question, whose fault is that? And they came to this conclusion, and when the creators and searchers have left the web for good, Google will have nobody to blame but itself. But it's a vicious cycle, right? Because I want to rank my website and my clients' websites higher, so I need to fight against SEO, therefore I have to become an SEO. That's why SEO is so important. 
And if you want to learn how I'm scaling things, right, I have an auto blog and masterclass that becomes open every once in a while. And on top of that, if you're a business owner, you have a business that's global, say, national, or even a local business like a carpenter, we help all of these businesses rank higher on Google so you can get more leads. But if you have any questions, reach out.